Welcome everyone to our Wednesday, uh, to our uh, Monday night shiur. We used to have it on Wednesday. Right? <laughs> the women took over. And, uh, and uh, this is going to be, next week is Pesach. So this is our last shiur before Pesach. Because next week is going to be uh, the day before B'tikat Hametz. People are busy getting ready, shopping, this, that. So today is going to be our last introductory uh, course, I like to call it, for Passover. Today. Hmm? Today. Today, today is the last uh, uh, shiur before Pesach, I mean regular shiur. And we have our Thursday nights and our Sundays that we're going to keep on going. And uh, so therefore we're going to try to get in as, as many stuff as possible. I'm going to try to make Pesach more of a different uh, experience for you guys, okay? Before we do that, I want to thank the anonymous sponsor. Hashem And Hashem should give them a lot of brachot, a lot of aslachot, a lot of yeshuot, b'fu'ah, whoever needs. Amen. Amen. And so let's start. And obviously Pesach is a very unique holiday for the Jewish people. Because it was, we kind of celebrated the first Seder while we weren't technically Jewish. As a nation. As a nation. Okay, so it's a, what we call a primordial uh, holiday. It's a primordial holiday. That means it's, it's Kadmon, it's, it's before Bnei Israel. It's before Briyat HaOlam. It's, it's something unbelievable. Like Shabbat. Shabbat. But Shabbat, I want to tell you something from the Ariyah Kadosh. While you already mentioned Shabbat, I said this in my Shirim on my Sunday night Shirim, whoever heard it. No holiday compares to Shabbat. None. Whatever we do the whole year and all the holidays, we do all in one day on Shabbat. That's how special Shabbat is. Shabbat is an unbelievable day. The Etrat songs there is just, there was one Hasidic Rebbe, I forget his name. I always, when after the shiur, I look him up and then I always forget. But there was one Hasidic Rebbe who used to say, I don't sleep on Shabbat. So they ask him, how come you don't say, you have to have Shabbat. He said, I'm Shomer Shabbat. Do you ever see a watchman going to sleep on his... Uh, on his, on his guard, if you, ever have a, if you have a guard sleeping, he's supposed to be the guard. And he falls asleep, you're gonna fire him, no? So I'm Shomer Shabbat, I, I keep the Shabbat, I, I guard the Shabbat. So Shabbat is the highest day, just in short, on Shabbat we go. I said yesterday in my shiur, if you get this right now, everybody sitting over here, you have the introduction to do any kavana in Sidur Ari. Okay? I said this yesterday, I'm gonna say to you again today. Just let's get this point, because this point will take you very far in Sidur Ariya Kadosh, okay? The whole world we have today, it's created in a way where you have two main uh, hashpa'ot. Hashpa'ot is influences. One is biological, one is environmental. One hashpa'a you get from your parents, nature, straight. Nature. nature versus nurture, correct. This nature versus nurture, is, it's not a uh, chidush. It's not a uh, novelty. When God created the world, when he first created the world, you cannot say when he created the world. Because, because you, what's north of the North Pole? It's, it's, the, it's the most north. It means time only began when he created the world. Because to create the world, you need time and space. If you don't have space, then you don't have time. Because time is only created as a result when there was space. And before he created the world, there was nothing but him. So if there is nothing but him, then there is no space. And if there is no space, there is no time. So you can't ask what he did before. The question itself is an oxymoron. Okay? The question itself is a paradox. You cannot say what, what's north of... It's the most northern... You can't go before. It's Kadmon. Right? But when he decided to create the world... When he decided, why did he decide? It's like, you know, I'll give you a pushed answer that I like. It's not a deep answer why he created the world. It's not a I'm not gonna give you a deep answer right now. I'm gonna tell you what the Balatanya writes in, in, in a footnote in his book, Shar Yehuda and Munah. He writes over there, you know, you ever meet a guy who likes chocolate? Some people like vanilla. Some people like milk chocolate. Some people like dark chocolate. Some people like white chocolate. Everybody likes a different chocolate. So he's like, he doesn't give this example. I'm reading this example. He says, he says, you ever ask a guy, why do you like milk chocolate? <laughs> what, do you, what is he going to tell you? 
Oh. I like it. Because <laughs> I like it. You ever ask a guy, that's a guy, um, how come you like, um, I don't know, um, warm weather versus the cold weather? Some people like the cold weather more. I like it. It's me. It's my desire. It's my taiva. So he said, asking why God created the world is like asking a person, why do you like him? I like it. He decided. That's called Ratzona Pashut. That's called because he just decided. He wanted to. And he didn't want to for a specific reason. Because he just wanted. felt he wanted to. I just like, it happens to be, I like milk chocolate. It's a very, I don't want to compare his desire to ours because it's not. Because when we eat chocolate, we also like the, the taste. For him, there is no taste. There is no, there's nothing tangible over there. He doesn't have a body. Right? It's the first mistake the generation of Enosh did, the, grand, the, the grandson of Adam. They wanted to put God in a misgeret. In a framework, like I want to serve him, but I want to see, I want to feel it. You know what I mean? I want to have something that I could turn to, right? And that's why God gave us the base hamikdash, by the way, because the base hamikdash was originally supposed to be, at least according to the Sephora, no. According to the Sephora, the base hamikdash originally was supposed to be your own house. Your table was the mizbeach. Your kodesh hakodeshim was your bedroom. It's that's how the that's how it was supposed to be. When God saw, according to Sephora, no, that the Jews needed something. Tangible, and why did he see that? <clears throat> because what did they just do a second ago? They just get danced around around the golden calf. That means the Am Israel needed something. They wanted to. The, their Amcha wanted something tangible to work with. So God said, "I'll give them a Mishkan." <clears throat> you understand? I'll give them an uh, an illusion of what the supernal worlds look like. Okay, that way they could feel like they're in the Avodah with me, and I'll and I'll reveal a little bit of my of my oneness. Of my individuality, of my of my yichida inside that mishkan. Then the mishkan turned into a bet hamikdash, bet hamikdash one, bet hamikdash two, until eventually it was destroyed, and we're all longing for that bet hamikdash hashirishi, which is supposed to be built in this month. We're all sleeping, we're all davening for ourselves. How many times did this month did we pray for the bet hamikdash and the giulah? How many times do we have kavana in it? You know what I'm saying? We have to spend our time davening for the giulah. This is the month of misukal to the giulah. So when a god decided to create this world, what did he do? What was the first? now to create? Now, same thing with marriage. If I if I want to get married, I have to make room for somebody else in my, in my life. If I'm going to get married for selfish reasons, I'm not married. Right? Yeah, you're not gonna stay married. Exactly. You're not gonna stay married. So what did God do to get married to us? He made an empty space. We call that a tzimtzum. Right? And there's a special name of God called Matzpatz. That name means tzimtzum. Right? He restricted himself. What did he point for? What? Why did he restrict himself? To make us. Yisrael ala b'machshava. Rishona. Am Yisrael came to his, to his type. What he wanted to create first was us. You sitting in this room. If you don't believe in this, then Pashut, you don't believe in the Zohar Kadosh and in the Ariya Kadosh. If you don't believe in them, then you're probably a Kofer Beikah. Okay, it's Pashut like that. So, because why did he create this world? Why did he do this? A person reaches these questions some point in his life. Right? And so when God created this, this Tzimtzum, when the end Sof, when the infinite one, he who has no name, he has no name. When he created this world, he made a dark void. Now this dark void, I'm going to give you a scoop now. It's an illusion. Mm. It's really, there really was no Tzimtzum. The Tzimtzum is only how we perceive it. We think there is a Tzimtzum. And our job is to keep on playing this hide and seek it's like God is playing hide and seek with us. And we keep on trying to find him. And he enjoys this game of hide and seek with us. And what's happened in the last 2,000 years, we just stopped playing with him. And because we stopped playing the game of trying to find him, all the bad Yisurim happened to us. Because the point of creation of this world was to find him. That means was to look in through this Tzimtzum and say this Tzimtzum, doesn't really exist. It's fake. There is no space between me and you. This space is an illusion. You ever heard of the butterfly effect? A person eating rice in China could cause a tsunami in uh, California. The mind, the thought, is the scientists say, is something real. 
what I think is real, my thoughts could change what, what happens in this room. If I think really hard on something, it'll come true. Goyim believe it. Goyim or Seba. We don't need the Goyim to say this. Yisrael, Allah, and Machshava, Rishonah. Am Yisrael was the first thing that came to Hashem to be created. Now, in this Simsum, when He created this Simsum, what happened was, if we can make a lot, if we can make a Simsum, that Simsum was in the way it is shaped in a circle. Why a circle? Because the circle is the most complete geometrical shape. In a square, there's always a point in the square that will get, that will be uh, unequal to the, to the other parts. But wherever I'm standing in a circle, I'm always equal to any other part in the circle. Why did Hashem create the world like this? So when He's going to bring back His Shefa, and when He brings it back into this Tzimtzum, it's in the smallest, minute form that could ever be. Because if it was a bit more, the whole Tim Tsum would just pop and go back to what it was. This, this void. When he brings it back and he started to create the world, right? The world, this Kav, this is called the Kaba and Sof. This is the Kav, this is the pipe which God reveals himself in the void. And around this Kav, he's going to create ten spherot in the shape of wheat we call in Adam. That means in in three in three kavim. All right, it's not drawn to scale. I'm a horrible drawer artist. But what does that mean? Three kavim, three levels. The middle is keter, tiferet, yesod, and malchut. That's the, that's the middle column. The right column is Chokhmah, Chesed, and Netzach. The left column is Bina, Gvura, and Hod. Those are the first creations of God in the formation. Just look at, his, look, look at yourself in the mirror. That's what the formation was. Okay? But not the way we look. This is in the world of Asiya. Over there, it's not even tangible compared to us. Now this Adam, it's called an Adam, but not the Adam that you're thinking of, you, Chas Shalom. that's Kfira. This Adam, it's also called an Adam, it's called Adam Kadmon, the primordial man. Before anything else was created, God created this system, it's called a system, his Hanhaga, how he runs this world. This Adam gets Shefa two ways from God, from the end of. One is through the Kav, that's called nature. And the second, the insult is still surrounding the Tsim Tsum. That's the environment. <laughs> Nurture, or vice versa. How you want to see it. That means, through the Igulim, through the surrounding, he also gets a Shefa. And through his Nishama, he also gets a Shefa. And God fills this void. He surrounds all the worlds. And he fills all the worlds. But to do this was a big sacrifice, not shalom, the way you think a sacrifice is, because God had to make room for us. Just like when a person gets married, you have to make room because you're kabutabi, like Hashem over here. And your wife is like the first creation. And you have to make room and bring this first creation in the tzimtzum that you created. Like the womb. Exactly. The same thing is the with the with the building. Everything is everything in this world is nature and nurture. Igulim and yoser. Igulim and yoser. Outside hashpa'a and inside hashpa'a. And when that happens, now what happened? <coughs> but in this perfect world, this perfect world, there was no yetzer hara. There was no yetzer hara. No uncle Sam. No uncle Sam Okay. To create the Yetzer Hara, God created six of, uh, seven of these systems, seven of them. And, he, and what's Yetzer Hara, by the way? The Yetzer Hara means only one thing. You, Not that God, Yetzer Hara, in its original, 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 original form, just means chaos. Again, what's Yetzer Hara? God created... So I'm going to erase this picture over here. It's getting a bit too deep. 
<laughs> to create this this illusion, uh, Abraham, to create an illusion. Thank you. To create an illusion of Yetzirah, because really there is no Yetzirah, because really there is no Tim Tum. It's just an illusion so we could be created in it. That means we were always really here. But to reveal us to think that we're separate from him, he hides himself. Because if he would be revealed in the same way as he yeah, always yeah. was, you, you, wouldn't even, you wouldn't even believe you existed anymore. That's called bitul. In Kabbalistic terms, it means when I'm mevat, I nullify myself to God. I'm really nothing, I tell myself. That means, when I say I'm really nothing, I means I'm, 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 I'm something, everything. right? I'm everything, exactly. If I'm nothing, I'm everything. Because I've always been in the ace and the end self. I've always been there, I just never thought of myself as me. Because there, there is no chidush to Hashem. God doesn't need your tefillah, He doesn't need your this, He doesn't need your that. Everything we do, is just to reveal another aspect of him. <clears throat> now the Ariya Kadosh teaches us it takes us 6,000 years to do that. To do what? We already know that there is God. If a Goy would come here and say, bow down to JC or give your life to God, we would say, Bito, Shema Yisrael, and we'll go. But it takes 6,000 years for the Goy to reach that. Mm. So we say at the end of Aleinu L'Shabeach, L'taken Olam, it's all the tefillah that we did is just that the goyim should know that there is a God in the world. And they're coming closer to closer. First, they believed in paganism. Then they believed astrology. Then they believed in Zeus. Then they believed in ba 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 ba. Till an, a Jew came along, made himself into a God. And now there's one God. But it's also an idol because it's a human being. Because he put himself in a man form. He made too much of a... He, oh, he believes in the Tzimtzum only. He doesn't see the end stuff in the team too. This Jew, JC, right? Yoshka. So now the whole world believes in God, but they're making a, a prime mistake. What's that mistake? They believe he's three. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, whatever they call it. The, the Shlishia. Okay? We don't believe in the ten sphere of. What are you, we don't believe in them. We don't serve the ten sphere of. We serve God that reveals his midot. So when he acts to us through chesed, we see the chesed. Gvura, gvura. But I, I want to get to the seder because the shiur is about the seder. Right? Now I'm going to tell you what is seder really is. <clears throat> so to create... Now why am I telling you this? You know, we were here for Sunday night for the shiur. I was explaining a little bit of this. And one guy's like, you know, he left the shiur on Sunday night. He said, well, listen, if, if only you know, if people would learn this, it would change the way they look at mitzvot. It's not just, and that's why we want to break the Rasha's teeth on the night of the Seder. Because he comes, this Rasha comes, this son that's a Rasha, and you got to look at the Pshat. I know there's a lot of uh, things, a lot of Pshat, but the Pshat is, the, the Rasha comes and he says, listen, when are we going to eat? <laughs> when are we going to eat? You understand? And the truth is, if I was alone, just with my family, I could do the Seder in literally 15 minutes. You understand? It's not a long process, you understand? But this Russia comes with all of his, you know, all of his chaos, which I'm going to tell you, that's the real Islamic man. He comes like, when are we going to eat? He just wants, he wants to be materialistic. He wants to eat. He wants the chaos. You know what he doesn't want the seder. Why am I saying this? To create the individual human being, to make us believe that we're separate from God, and that way we could work our way back to God and get a reward in what's called Gan Eden and Olam Abba, God had to create a existence of something called Sitra Akhra. The other side, the dark side, the black side. You understand? Yin and Yang. He had to create this, this illusion, inner illusion, inner illusion. Kabutebi, the Satan, has a way to stand up to God. And this is where the Kritmachs got it wrong again. Because their whole religion is based, at least the uh, Catholics, they believe that as if there is a war going on between, the, between God and the Son of Man, and there's a goodness versus, it's pure Avodah Zara. Mm. And it's that, stop his head, it's, it's moving like that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pure Avodah Zara, it's Greek mythology, but that's not my point. So God created the Yetzirah for a reason, so we should believe that we have free will. That's why when Chava, when the Nachash told Chava, take from the fruit, whatever that meant, and eat, 
He didn't lie, the Nachash. You ever, you know, the Torah never said the Nachash lied. The Nachash told Chava, you're going to be like God. What did that mean? Before the sin in the, in the primordial tree called Etz Hadad, which is not a tree in this world, the, the level of existence is not what you see over here right now. In their language, it was called a tree. But they li- their, their world of Asiya was in what we call today Yitzira. So it was a totally different... Uh, the materialism was different. But let's call it what the Torah says, a tree. In our context, a tree. Now we're doing Birkat Ha'ilanot. Pay attention. He says, you're gonna, he says to her, you're going to eat from the tree and you're going to be like God. That to know Yod'e. Didn't say Osei. He said, Yod A, to know between good and ra and evil. What did he mean by that? The only being, the only being, and the one and only being, Echad Yachid Umiyuchad, that could create evil is God. It's called Yesh Mi'ayin, something from nothing. from nothing. You understand? The Satan is really an, an illusion. How did he, Hashem create him? Every day we say Anabakoach. Those seven sa- stanza correspond to a system that God created called Malche Edom, the kings of Edom. Before there was a king that ruled Israel, says the Torah, the Torah gives us a whole list. There was a king that ruled seven kings that ruled in Edom. And there's an eighth one too, but that's already, I don't want to get into the eighth one. There were seven kings that ruled over Edom. And the Torah says, first king was called Bela ben Beor. He ruled and he died. Second king was Yovav ben Zerach. And he ruled and he died. Third king was Husham from the land of Taman. He ruled and he died. Next king was Hadad ben Bedad. He ruled and he died. Next king was Samlami Masreka. He ruled and he died. Next king was Shaul Merchovot Anahar. And he, Jewish name. He ruled and he died. And the next last king was Baal Hanan ben Achbor. He ruled and he died. Says the Zohar, not the Ari, the Zohar and Idra Rabba. You read this in the night of Shavuot. Why does the Torah keep on telling me he ruled? What is this, a history book? This really sounds like history. And what do I care who ruled in Edom before there was a king in Israel? Says the Zohar, all the Kabbalah is in those five, se- seven sentences in Parashat Vayishlach. That's the root. That seven, those seven kings, that's really us. How? Those seven kings are the original names for the Midot of Hashem. Mm. For the Sfirot of God that He created. What are they? Da'at. Chesed, Gvura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and Malchut. Chochma Bina and Da'at, that's Am Yisrael. We got to the Machshava Barishona. I don't want to get into it. I'm not going to teach you right now. Haim. If you guys remember, a long time ago we used to learn here, Otzrot Haim. Mm-hmm. This is where we stop. <laughs> right here in the Shmira. To create chaos, to create a Satan, God had to create. The only thing that seems different than him. And what is that? Chaos. Unruliness. Doesn't make sense. Balagan. Okay? So God broke these seven vessels. Because what? How do, when you break something, it's chaos. It's chaotic. And the breaking of the vessels is what we call the Satan. The essence of the Satan is chaos. That's all it is. What's the opposite of chaos? Harmony. When things are in order. How do you say order in Hebrew? Seder. That's what the Seder night is. Comes Hashem and he says, whoa. Take it easy. I created... This system over here, and I created this Satan, which is chaos. And this chaos gave birth to the greatest empire that ever lived, Keter the Klippa. What are they? The pyramids. You ever seen the pyramids? 
Anybody here been to Egypt? Besides for you? <laughs> Anybody here been to Egypt? <laughs> How does a pyramid look? Triangle. It's a triangle, right? You have big bricks on the bottom, right? And then you have less bricks on the next shikva. Smaller ones, by the way. It's not drawn to scale. I'm a horrible artist. Then the next is less bricks. And so on, so on, so forth. Till on the top, 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 you have what? One stone on the top. <laughs> the Satan comes to, to Chava and she says, listen, I'm said, God is lying to you. I'm not chaos. I'm said, he tells, he tells Chava. Because to have seder, he says, what's good is to always be good. To always know the truth. It's not fun. Don't you want to have a little bit of a missed a challenge? And, and Adam Harishon, which he's missing in the whole story over there, suddenly he ate from the tree. He didn't even see him eat from the tree. Adam is like, you know what? He's right. <laughs> How can I serve God? But he did it out of truth. How can I serve Hashem if I don't have a test? What's the point of me always? What's the point of always knowing the truth? And he regretted it. Thank you. Adam. The next second, right? Thank you. Adam. What do you mean? You were in there too. What do you think? Your your olama absolute You left him before he did. You yourself said, "He come here. You were in him. Trust me. We all here were in him. Trust me." Adam said, "What's the point of serving him if I don't have?" A test. I want to taste that shvira, but God already fixed the shvira when He made Adam. He fixed it. The Satan was just a external, an external being that was there. The chaos was there to serve Him, because God is the ruler of chaos. He rules chaos. He rules good. He rules everything. When the angels saw Adam, they saw, "Whoa, what is this being? It's like..." It's like, it's like Yudke Mavke. They were enamored by Adam. He was more complete than them. His, he saw from one end of the world to another. He saw everything. They, they were making him shish kabal over there. Giving him wine. But then he said, well, the Nachash, you no, know, the devil's advocate. He has a point. I want to be the greatest servant to God I, I could be, says Adam. But how can I do that if I didn't taste what chaos is? Let me taste it. A bit. What do you mean he didn't have it? He did chuba after that for 130 years. And he, and he ate from the etzadat. And he brought the chaos, not only in the external. He was, remember I said the world is internal? Mm -hmm. The Adam gets the shefa internally. And he also gets it externally. The kav is inside the world. And also the ensof is giving the shefa from the outside. So he was there. Back then the Nachash was only on the outside. Now the Nachash went inside of him in the Kav itself. It attached itself to the Kav. Mm. Le inside a human being he's there. From the moment of conception, the moment of conception, the parents give the child a Yetzer HaTov and a Yetzer Haram. Because of Adam. Because of, because of that, I want to serve Hashem through... Uh, through a challenge. I want the challenge. Exactly. I'm asking for the challenge. I'm asking for it. And what do we say every morning? Every morning we're saying vidui on that. We say, Hashem, don't give us the test. <laughs> we don't want the test and we don't want the reward. <laughs> it's true. We don't want the test because we're going to fall the test. We're going to fail the test. Yeah. We're meant to, we're, we're, the fail, the fail. It's already how you say it's been. It's in our DNA, the failure. Inevitable. It's inevitable, but not, but it's inevitable only in retrospect. You can't say it's inevitable looking forward. You understand? It's inevitable when you look back. Like how much did I fall? You understand? And how much did I grow? So the chachamim come and say, well, ain yirida ela letzorech aliyah. But look what the keter, what the mitzrayim did. <clears throat> what did Mitzrayim do? Mitzrayim said, Mitzrayim served the Nachash. How do we know they served the Nachash? When Hashem said to Moshe and Aharon, Go, do my otot. What's otot? Do my wonders. My signs. Huh? 
מופתים, yeah. אותו טי, מופתי, ויש מצרים, what I see different. He said to Aaron, send your stuff and it's going to turn into what? Anachash. Now I would think if I want to, uh, if I want to uh, impress. impress Paro, I would say turn it into, I don't know, a lion. Dragon. A dragon. A flying snake. <laughs> turn it into something, wow, turn it into a snake? A snake? <laughs> and when Moshe was in the burning bush, Hashem said, turn the staff, I'm going to turn the staff into what? A snake. What is he telling Moshe? The world right now is in a state of problem. Because see these guys that are, these whitey guys that are in this land of Mitzrayim, these slaves, <clears throat> see those guys? They're the chosen ones. And the Goyim hated when we say this. It kills them when we say this. It drives them bananas. <laughs> But that's what it says. Baruch Hashem, Asher, Bachar, Banu Mikol Avi. You say it every time you go to the Torah. It's in the Torah. We got to tell the Kritmach. Listen, it says, you believe in the Old Testament. It says, Asher, Bachar, Banu. Yisrael, Bachar, Tibo. What do you want? It says in the Torah, Bachar, Tibo. What do you want? So they come up with their Mishagah. So the Mishagah, oh, these are not the original. <laughs> Israel. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's they all, it comes with a lot of Mishnah guys. Anyways, I don't want to get into that right now. This is not a debate class, how to debate a Kreet Mach or a Muslim. There's a lot of stuff you can say to that. So he says, well, if they're going to be these chosen guys, uh, Gabriel, I, they fell really deep in the chaos. Really deep. From the time of Adam till Moshe, they fell down seven levels. The seven kings, right? They fell down seven, they went deep. And seven times seven is? So they didn't just go deep. They went to the 40, they went to the, they went to the extreme, these guys. And remember, this is all without changing their name, their dress, and ever assimilating. And they still fell that deep. And he said, I need to get them out because I need to start the tikkun process. But they're in the snake. They're in the belly of the snake. And Paro, with his pyramids, the, ideo the ideology of Egyptians is the same ideology of today. Same ideology of today. You see the pyramid, how it keeps on becoming more narrow, more narrow, until there is a apex. one so there's an apex, one king on the top. That's how the hierarchy in Egypt worked. You had a lot of workers on the bottom. Then you had merchants that the workers worked for, and the merchants worked for the aristocrats. And the aristocrats worked for the royal family. And the royal family worked for the boss. Paro, how does it work today in any company, in any, in any country? It's the same exact thing. It never changed. It's the same ideology. So why live in this ideology? It's an illusion. It's all an illusion. What's the illusion that Satan sells us? It's a seder. I'm not chaos. I'm seder. You know why you have to work for me? He says, simple. I'm going to sell you the illusion that you could be promoted. If you play your cards right, you're not going to stay in the bottom forever. You're going to keep on going okay. up. But that's an illusion because you don't know if you're going to go up. And even if you go up, you always have somebody higher than you. There's like you're calling, can I speak to the manager in a bank? But my manager has another manager, has another man. Then there is a CEO somewhere out in, in, the, out in North yes. Dakota, out there in a bank. Maybe he's the CEO, but he works for somebody else. It's all an illusion. On the top of that illusion is the Nachash. And the Nachash says, don't listen to Hashem. I'm the real Seder. So what did Hashem do? You're the Seder? He tells him, why do you think you're the Seder? Because the Egyptians believed they were the Bechor of the world. The Nachash said, I'm the Bechor. I was created before Adam. I was the chaos before Adam was created. I'm the Bechor. Now look at the word Bechor. How do you spell the word Bechor? How come the 10th plague, Makat Bechorot, is the most wow plague? Wow. I think Dam was a crazy plague, if you ask me. The waters turned into blood, not uh, uh, iron, uh, uh, I don't know, the red dust, they say, that's going inside the oceans right now in the rivers. Actual blood. Red blood cells were, were, in, the, were, were in the water. You know how rich Am Yisrael became from that? That's a crazy, that's a crazy uh, uh, plague. 
It's unbelievable. No, makat bechorot. Okay, a plague. What's makat bechorot? It was a plague. People dropped dead. Okay, so. But it's the most amazing. What, what's a bechor, guys? What's a bechor? You see, in the Aleph Bet, <clears throat> is a secret language. It's not like A, B, C, D, or Latin, or Greek, or Phoenician. Or Ru Russian is Russia. But it's not like any of these things. Aleph Bet is a coded language. Why come when you go to a Mikubal, hopefully he's a real one, he says to him, the first thing he says, give me your name. In your name, in the letters of your name, is hidden a code. And if you know how to play around with the code well enough, you can tell things about the person from the code. How do you say a firstborn in Hebrew? Bechor. Let's look at the word. Bet, chaf, resh. Pay attention. What number is bet? Two. two. Chaf, 20. 20. Resh, 200. Two, two, two. What's the Nachash coming to tell us all the time? There is two in the world. Hashem and me. I'm the Bechor. Do you think it's a coincidence that all firstborns have to fast Erev uh, Pesach? It's not a coincidence. All Bechors have this Klippa in them. All of them. They always think they're doing the balls. <laughs> they always think that they have a right. And the twice as they do, they get double portion. But what did the Nachash say? I'm the Bechor. I'm the first. I'm the apex. I'm the top of the pyramid. Hashem said, you're the Bechor? Makat Bechorot. But what are we going to do with the Bechors of Am Yisrael? The din inside that Bechor, I have to give him to the complete opposite. What is that? What's the complete opposite of din? Chesed. 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 Who's Chesed? Who? Abraham. Abraham. Uh, true. But which one in Am Yisrael? <laughs> Who? Which kind of people? Um, Kohanim. Kohanim. Hey. And every Bechor belongs automatically to, to a Kohen. To take away that... That klipa that he thinks he's the he's the leader over he's the bechor he gets double, and we and what do we do we buy him back what do we buy him back with silver another chesed another chesed we buy him back and what do we said to be silver a certain amount of silver and how and, and what in the time of the Beit Hamikdash what do we do with all firstborn animal what do we do with it it's a the bechor it's a korban we don't we need slaughter it's a, it belongs to the kohen. We see, he has to slaughter in the base of Middash. Every Bechor, you have a flock of sheep, every sheep, you have to pay attention. Each one that gives birth to a firstborn baby, belongs to a Kohen. I don't know yet, I'm not an expert in the Korbanot Why thing. Is the huh? Huh? Why is the Kohen Chesed? Kohen is Chesed because the Kohen, when he does the Avodah, he has to connect to, a, he has to bring down the light of Chesed. Okay? And his Avodah is like Arona Kohen, every Kohen, Kohen Le'el, Kohen Le'el Elyon. We see from the Torah that he's chesed, unlike the Levi, we're not going to get into that right now, but don't worry, Israel is higher than all because he's Tifer, he has both of them, so don't worry. <laughs> so, uh, the, yeah, it's true, Kohen has special jobs, but he misses out on a couple of good mitzvot. <laughs> like we don't, but what's one animal you can't fix him? And it's, it's in your tefillin! The chamor. <laughs> the chamor. And that's why we do pidyon pet chamor. You can't fix it. You gotta take him back from the Kohen. Every other animal. It's the only non kosher animal, the only Bechor, that you have to get him back. And if you don't get him back, what do you do to him? You take his neck, you take a kofit. The kofit is a. No, it's a, one of the axe. Axe. And you gotta. In the Orif. Over here. In the Orif. I don't wanna show it on me. In the Arafat. In the Paro. In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the. In the Orpa. You take it and crack him right in the place of the Dalat of the Tfilin. Right in that spot. I mean, our doll feet, the donkeys don't have dolphins. Yeah, we kill him. We knock him out. You feel bad for him? No, I'll tell you, it's good. <laughs> we were okay here to do that once, not the killing. The pidion. The pidion. Yeah, we did. So anyways, I don't want to take too much of your time. Let's get into, now that we know a little bit of what Seder is, now once we kill the Bechors, now we could do Korban, Pesach, and start the real Seder. The seder of the tikkun. 
And if you don't do uh, uh, Korban Pesach, it's Chayav Karet, because that's the essence of a Jew, Korban Pesach. And once you get rid of the chaos in your life, now you can start having emuna. And that's why they said, Mishinichas Adar Marbin Basimcha, Mishinichas Nisan Marbin Beemuna. So you have to go inside Pesach, but well, this is all days of uh, preparation. This Shabbat, by the way, is Yud Nisan. Yud Nisan, it's a very big etrazon. Besides the fact, and the year before, in the year of Yitziat Mitzrayim, also Yud Nisan fell on Shabbat. So that's what it's called, Shabbat Agadol. So when you go inside the Pesach night, now you have to go in. I love the Ashkenazi Minhal. They all wear the white, kittle. the kittel. They wear the white kittel. They all come in. I also, I also do that. I, I adopted this Minhag. I hope you guys like. You also got one too. I adopted your Minhag. I, I couldn't find a Jome. And plus they're very hot. The kittel is cotton. So it's very free. It's relaxing. Yeah, and I understand the Jome is go in there, especially me. I, I'm, a steam is coming out of my ears. So I don't wear that thing. But you come in. It's a day of Kiddushah. So they have said there, you're a king that day. Why are you a king? Because you got control of the chaos. And chaval al hazman. Chaval al hazman. Oh, Hashem is not going to test me now. <laughs> if on that day you will let the nachash creep in into your house. Get out of here, you nachash. Yeah, I, I want to read you something, if you guys don't mind. I hope I'm not going to hurt anybody's feelings over here. It's not me, Rabbi Victor Miller said this. I took a picture of it. I have to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, oh, the guy deleted it. I guess it hurt too many people's feelings. Uh, on somebody's status. Paraphrase. Yes, I'll paraphrase it for you. So the guy says to Rabbi Miller, why are you so against people leaving their house to go to hotels on Pesach? Now, I'm not trying to hurt somebody's uh, his business, this, that. I'm just going to tell you where Victor Miller is. Because he said it. That means I can say it in his name. He said, those people who go to, 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 uh, to hotels and to what he calls them massive seders, goes to uh, community seders. He uh, programs. He said, that's the way of Amartziut. He's in Amaretz. He totally misses the point of the whole night. The night is so holy. It's so kadmon, it's so kadosh, that night, the sigulot, just by doing the seder correctly, forget about all the sigulot, it's kind of just doing it correctly, you can make a seder in your whole life. He didn't say this, I'm already adding this. Uh, but do they have to do it correctly? Now, what's the correct way of doing it? Number one, please, Rabbi Isai. That's obviously. <laughs> Never get angry. Please don't spend that day talking about politics, mm. talking about money, talking about business, talking about uh, who bought this house and who's like this and who got this, who got that. Such a pagam, such a pagam. And the Pesach, and the night of the pe, pe, Pesach, what sach? When you give the pe chayim, you're destroying the pe. Don't waste it talking about shtuyot. Don't worry about that rasha. There's every table that has a rasha. He's going to say, where is the food? Take out the food. Don't get angry at him. Break his teeth. Not on the Seder night. Afterwards, you can break his teeth. The, the Haggadah says, no, no kidding. Don't break anybody's teeth. We're not for uh, violence. But the point, don't waste the moment of the Haggadah. On the night, you have to go to the Mikveh before. It's no less going to the Mikveh before Pesach than it is going before Yom Kippur. Sorry to break this to you guys. It could even be higher. Okay? Go to the mikveh before. Read the Seder, Korban Pesach from the Sidur. Read the Sigula, Rabbi Shimshon, Mastroponia. It's in every Haggadah. Whoever reads that uh, part, uh, that uh, Sigula, Rabbi Shimshon, Mastroponia, it's called Etzba Elokim. Muftach lo shelo inzak bo'oto shanat. Promised him you won't get damaged that whole year. Read the 42 Membet Masaot in your house. The, the 42 Staps. Before Pesach, get ready. Make sure the table is set before Pesach. Make sure the Ka'ara is set according to the Kabbalah. Not some people have a Ka'ara. Some people have a Ka'ara like this. Right? And then in the middle, they put the Matzot. Then around it in circles, they put the, they put the Simanim. different Simanim. That's wrong. Order. That's wrong. Order. There has to be the right Seder. 
Okay? That means the kara has to be round. Olamot, that's the tzimtzum. Right? Then you have to bring in the olamot ayosha. You have the chesed. I believe that's the zeroa. Goes on the right, right, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody here knows. And the left over here is either the karpas or the beitza. Not, I don't remember correctly, but it's either the karpas in, in Gvura. Then you have Tiferet. Tiferet, I know for sure, is the Maror. Right? In the bottom of the year, you have the, the paste. Mm. I see the paste Karoset. again. Karoset. Over here, you have, once again, either the celery mm. or the egg. And then in the bottom of the year, you have Chazeret. So once again, Chesed, Giburat, Tiferet, Netzach, Hod, Yesod. Where's Malchut? Where is the seventh king? Wow. Wrong. The Kara itself. The Kara itself, that she's the Malchut that night. Okay? The Malchut is like the Noach's Teva, holds in all the Midot. And the Matzah is the three Matzot, Keneged Chochmah, Bina, and Da. On top, you put it, some people put it right over here, touching it on top like this. Some people put it on top, Mamash. Okay? And it's very important. Rav Chaim Kanevsky, I remember seeing his Min Hagim, he wouldn't add anything to the actual story. Whatever was in the Haggadah, the story, that's what he would read and tell over, that's what he would do, that's it. He wouldn't add, anything he would add was always in the Shulchan Oref. Why would he do that? <clears throat> I'll give you two reasons why you should do that. Number one, you should do that if you're gonna add too much in the Haggadah itself. I know you're all excited, you wanna say more of the story, but the whole night you could say the story. You're being Mekayim into Mitzvah Daoraita. If you do it too long, there is those people on the table, and of course it's a night of, it's a communal, ga- it's a family gathering. He wants to eat really badly. You know, and he's gonna say, come on, finish the Haggadah already, I wanna eat, he wants to eat the thing. You understand, wait a second, fasted, huh? huh? Especially if he was fasting. Especially if he was fasting that day. He, he has to, uh, he makes, he's very hungry, so let him eat. You understand? After he eats, you could say the Vred Torah instead of politics mm-hmm. on the Shulchan Orech. Okay, instead of using the Haggadah, which is already a set Seven. reading, use that time to read, you're reading the Haggadah, you're reading the story, you're making the Mitzvah, you see, Puri Tzav Mitzrayim, but you want to take your kid on your lap and tell him the story the way it was. Right? You still, yeah, you want to tell him something small. What's the age you could say already putting your kids on your lap and telling them the story? Two. Two? What is your kid a genius? <laughs> really, every kid according to his smartness, but usually around the age of six. Six, seven, he could already sit down and focus for five minutes. And you could sit him on your lap, you could tell you could tell him, do you know this? And tell him a chidush. Tell him a chidush. If the kids want to say a speech, once again, I say just you make the speeches in the Shulchan Orech. Instead of using that time to talk shriyot, while you're eating and munching on your matzah, you can say the Shulchan Orech. Now another tikkun over here that we have to say, Kadesh, Kiddush, Urchatz, we all know, we wash our hands, without a beracha for the Karpas, Kadesh, um, Urchatz, uh, Karpas, you eat a celery, right? Specifically celery, even if you're an Ashkenazi, I was listening, even if you're Ashkenazi and you guys eat potato or use a, a whatever your minhag was, the Arya Kador says specifically, you must use karpas. Push it, if you don't use the karpas, you're missing the tikkun of the karpas. If you don't eat the celery, you're using something else, even though it's okay to use something else, but you're missing the light that comes inside the karp, with the karpas, which is the katnut rushan, we mentioned it yesterday in the shiur. Karpas yachatz. Yachatz, it's very hard to do, but instead of trying to make a dalat and a vav over there, even if you just have the kavana, the smaller piece is the dalit and the bigger piece is the vav, even that itself is considered that you made a dalit and a vav, right? The dalit is the heilach ma'aniya. I don't know what the source is that everybody goes around and starts saying heilach ma'aniya. I personally don't like it. You understand? But whatever people do, it makes them excited, especially the women get excited. Finally, they're joining in in something as if they don't join in enough things during the year. The, the women have been so brainwashed over this feminism thing. It's so, it's so brainwashed they've been. It just like, uh, you know, enough already. But, but, uh, you say? <laughs> so, uh, they give them to say, they don't have to say it three times, you know? But uh, after you say hey lachmania, you start the manishtana. <clears throat> the manishtana, you cover the everything you put at the end of the table, so the kids will ask, right? Manishtana. And then during the manish, during the during the magid, it's important that you understand what you're reading. You hear what I'm telling you? So don't right now on the night of Pesach, you guys are gonna ask the rabbi what he says. I'm telling you right now, it's important that you understand what you're reading. Okay? You can read it in your language. You can read the Magid, just like you go to pray tefillah in your language. I know the rabbi says to read it in Hebrew. Read it in both. 
Okay, but you have to understand, you hear that? Kohen le el elion. You have to, you have to understand the, the Haggadah. It's not long, maybe 15 pages. Okay. Uh, so you read Haggadah, you have to understand. When you pick up the cup, be very careful to cover the matzah. That's so when you're saying, Kisha Amda, Sigula. I'm doing this real quick so you guys, because I'm not going to give a shiur next week, it's right before Pesach. When you pick up the thing for that for the, uh, 10 makot, Right, <clears throat> one person in the family could do it. If you have three people on the table and no kavanot, maybe them all three could do it. But uh, yeah, usually so one guy does it. Yeah. You don't you have to. Have you don't have to. Okay, wait a second. You do the. Fi- it's fifteen times all together. Dam sfardei aditzach adash ba'achav. Dam eshtimor sixteen times. You do the sixteen. Right. The leftover wine. I'm going to explain to you right now, real quick. Why is it a sigula from the rashash? The leftover wine, you can give it to a in the cup, not in the the makot. The makot, don't spill it on anybody's uh, in anybody's thing, right? Don't spill it in anybody's uh, yard or anything. I heard from a big rabbi that a person who does that, that the 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 curse goes back to him. That's what I heard from a big rabbi. So don't spill it anybody's thing, this, that. Don't try to do any... Purpose. Huh? Well, not by purpose. Just by oh, by mistake. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oops, you were walking there. Okay. <laughs> so, the, but the leftover, the good wine in the cup, yeah. that's a sigula for pre If a woman wants to get pregnant, that cup over there, the leftover wine could give them uh, the ability of uh, getting pregnant. And the reason is like this, just real quick. This is, this is the sigula. Because like, all oh, these sigula, this, that... The Rashash says a sigula, it's a sigula. And I said, I'm sorry for being biased over here. <clears throat> Why is that? Remember we said when the wine is given, Baumarach bedamai chayi, Baumarach bedamai, God said you're going to live in the two bloods, the blood of the Mila and the blood of the Korban Pesach. This blood is symbolized in the wine that we drink. The wine has to be red wine, not white wine. Mm-hmm. According to Maran, it has to be red wine, okay? Al-Triyan ki tadam says the Gemara. Now, the blood... There are, there are ten kinds of bloods, right? Five that are Tameh, five that are Tahor. When you spill the 16 drops, that's the Tameh blood, okay? The Tameh blood, what makes a woman drop the baby. When she gets her Tameh blood, drops the baby. The Tahor blood is what she needs to get pregnant. Mm. And what's blood? What's the Kavana? Blood in Hebrew comes from the name Ekie. Ekie. If you take the name of Ekie, Aleph, Aleph. Hey, Aleph, Hey, Yud, and Aleph, Hey, and Yud, and Hey, that's called Ekye Beribua. Aleph, Aleph, Hey, Aleph, Hey, Yud, Aleph, Hey, Yud, K. It's going to be exactly Gematria Dam. Dam. But this is Dam Tahor. This is pure blood, Tahor blood. It's not Tameh, and it could give a woman a Sigula for a pre button. Okay? It's a Sigula. That means it doesn't just depend. And if you drink it, it depends who did it. Mm-hmm. You understand? Know it's, it's like they say, Daria Kadosh, he took Rav Chaim Vital to the waters of the Kinar, gave him to drink from the water of Miriam. And he suddenly got photographic memory. So Rav Kadur used to say like this, he said, anybody could go drink the waters of Miriam. He's not going to get uh, forever. Why? It doesn't depend who drinks it. It depends who's giving you the drink. <laughs> if you have Daria Kadosh giving you the drink, the waters of the Be'er Hashem, then you're going to get photographic memory. <laughs> but you have to be Daria Kadosh for that. So there, right, so there, after Hisha Amda, the Ten Makot, the Dayenu thing, I think it's a bad minhag to teach the kids to start hitting around people with that uh, celery. I don't even know where this minhag came from. Uh, it's uh, huh? I don't, I don't. Is it really a Persian minhag? Just <laughs> Persian. Uh, wait, we're going to question Eliyahu. So you do the Dayenu after the Dayenu parts. You do the you do the Gaal Israel after Gaal Israel. You say Leshem Yehud Kucha Berchut Shmite Hareni Bali Shtot Kos Shmini. You lean to the left, right? You lean. You could even lean on somebody, but you can't lean on your thing, right? Everybody has to lean. Uh, it's preferable if women also lean. Preferable. Everybody leans and lean. Drinks the second cup after that. Magid Rochza Al Nitilat. Yadaim, yeah, after Ani Tlat Yadaim, what do we do? Motsi Matzah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Motsi Matzah, well, everybody has to eat. It's Mitzvah Asem Minat Torah, the Orait of that night, to eat the Kazait Matzah. Now, if you're really Mahmir, which you should be, you should eat two Kazais, which is a Kabetzah, right? That means you have to eat at least one full Matzah, one full, the round ones. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, yeah, what else am I talking about? We're all here, Machmirim, Rebbe. So we are one, we all uh, uh, have to eat one full matzah. I think it's about a matzah and a little bit more, okay? 
So a little bit more. You have to do it leaning. You have to eat the whole matzah lean and no dipping. No dips while you're eating the matzah. Are you, are you listening to me? No dips. <laughs> no dips. Hummus, tahina, I don't know everything over there. What you do? Salatim, salsa. Kashola, pesach, salsa over there. <laughs> no dip. A little salt and pepper if you want, you can do that. A little salt and pepper. <laughs> so you, you, have to, you have to eat the whole thing leaning. If you don't lean, you have to eat the whole thing again. Okay? All right, so if you see everybody's about to eat, guys, please nicely. I know you guys are hungry. Please lean while you're You know the usual. Please, I'm begging you. Do the mitzvah correctly. I love you. Bring out the koshula pesach. Bring out the koshula pesach uh, schnapps. And say, please, it's going to be good. Maybe before he eats, he give him a little shot to drink. And then he leads, he eats the whole thing. After that, maror. We don't start. Already at this point, everybody's like this. Maror. Maror. This, in this kavanah of maror, you could be metaken all the death, chas v'shalom, and all the Yusri that's going to come. The Rashash says, maror is gematria mavet. You hear what I'm telling you? Maror is gematria mavet. You guys didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, that's Maror is scary. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> that's scary. Oh, that's why I thought you guys are so shallow. You guys are looking at me. What? So <laughs> the maror, you have to dip it in the haroset. But when you why haroset? Haroset, haroset, right? Is the letters reish vav tough is what root? Root amuavia like root. Root is gonna be a name of Hashem. I'm not going to tell you which one right now. And what's left? Chet and Samech. What's the gematria of Chet and Samech? 68, gematria Chaim. So I'm taking the death, I'm taking Maror, and I'm dipping it into the Chaim. Wow, I just transformed your uh, Maror into a whole shebang over here. You got to dip it inside the Chaim, but then you have to shake it off. You don't want too much, so much, much No much, too much high. Sometimes you have to know when. So you gotta take off the, shake it off. You gotta shake it off. No scooping, no scooping, guys. Ronnie, you're with me? No scoops. No scooping, though. No. I know you like it. Nimnoshka. Nimnoshka, how do you say it? Nimnoshka. <laughs> you take it, you scoop it out. You say the bracha al achilat. Maror. Hadama, you had kavana before. When you said the karpas on this, after maror, korech. Korech, once again, you have to lean. Sandwich. Mm. Not sandwich. Sa Yosef, the, yeah. the, the korech is a sandwich. So okay? Good one, yeah. <laughs> so it's a good one too. You take it. Once again, you don't take the paste and you make yourself over there. Uh, <laughs> la a hero. You got to take it. You got to take the right. You got to dip. You got to dip. Uh, and you lean. Okay? I'm sorry for to break your uh, thing. A little video on the foot. You can put a little video on the foot. Yeah, tchina, hummus, madbucha, put everything, huh? Chren. Oh, chren, no. Chren. Where the egg did chren come in here? Gabriel. We gotta go back to me, sir. No, no spicy. No spicy. No chren, no spicy. Especially not the red one. If you want the chren, you gotta get the white one. What's the difference? White, red, what's the difference? The white, the white one is the real, is the real chren. So you take it, you eat it. First of all, maror, there's five types of maror. The first one in the Mishnah is written down is what? Romaine lettuce. The best maror is romaine lettuce. It's written in the Mishnah. No, I'm saying on top of the lettuce. No, no, you do it different. It's enough bitterness. Why you want to add more? Exactly. Maror koreh. After koreh, which you ate leaning, then comes shulchan. Oh, right. Over here, you could say all your speeches, let all the kids, if they're, if they're still awake, you could let them speak, you could let them this, you could let them talk, you could say, Torah, five minutes, two minutes, everybody, three. Time, guys, you're on a time. You have to finish by midnight. Midnight this year is about one o'clock. Okay? okay? As you, as you After do. one o'clock, you're not allowed to eat afi koman. So, therefore, it's good to end by one o'clock. It's no over here, uh, it's not a it's race true. over it's here. True. It's not a, what do you call that? Uh, competition. Oh, Who oh, stayed oh, up the longest? If you're staying up long, it's Rabbi Akiva and his friends. And mm -hmm. speaking of, you see Puritz at Mitzrayi, I understand you're staying up long. But if you're staying there in Batai, about what did she do, how did he do, who's going through this and who's going through that, it's not a mitzvah. <laughs> it's go to sleep, exactly. You make the world a better place. So, Shulchan Arech, after Shulchan Arech, Tzafon. What's Tzafon? Afikoman. <clears throat> you find the vav, you find the vav, and you have to give out, everybody has to eat another kazait, zecher le korban pesach, and make sure not to stuff your face in shulchan or so for you could eat the afikoman, 
with a some appetite. Do you leave, leave some for next year? No? Some do two kazites, correct? Uh, do you leave some for the next year? There is a book mm -hmm. called uh, Keter Shem Tov. There is a Minhag Kadamon. He has to do that to save some. Mm -hmm. Some used to save it and save it uh, to be eaten on Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. To awaken the zikhut of the Korban Pesach on the day of the Rosh Hashanah. Some yeah. save it just as a sigula. Uh, whatever. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a it's a sigula. Yeah, it's a true it's sigula. I've seen it in Sfari. After Tzafon, which has to also get, once again be eaten. Leaning. Last All right, time. so if you, usually a guy gets dirty, put a bib. Tzafon, Barek, Berkat Amazon has to be said with Kavanah, with Bracha. If you miss Yalev, you have to repeat the whole thing, so don't do that. Right, because that night is a Chiyuv Doraita, right? And uh, you say you say the Barek, Berkat Amazon, drink the third cup, everybody. Leaning. Leaning. Then, Barek. Tzavon uh, Barech Halel. In the time of the, the time of the Beit Hamikdash, they used to go up to their roofs. Everybody used to go out with their cup of wine and sing the Halel. It was the night that was everybody used to come out sing in the Pesach night. They used to all go up to the roofs in Yerushalayim and sing the Halel. Halel has to be sung be after you finish Halel. Har. It has to be on the table. How they left out, left left and went to the roof. Maybe they, they left the somebody over there to have Kavanah for them. Doesn't matter, they already said that. So they had Hal. They had Hal. They said they were going to have a song, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they said we're going to have a song, what's the problem? Halel, they say Halel. Why are you guys knocking this chops over here? It's our cameraman over here. Halel, they say Halel, you say with Simcha. People are buying Halel already, they're like this. Halel, Nirza. When are you getting drunk? On Purim or on Feza? That's right, guys. Don't use. Don't think you're machmir. You're taking a big cup like Ugh, Melech Abashan. One time I was in somebody's house. He gave me this cup the size of my face no, over here. I thought I was strong. I drank the first second cup and the third guy was I was out. I was out for the count. So um, you gotta take a small uh, piole. Not a, not a regular because there's a big few. Those big piole. Three point eighty six grams. Three point oh three ounces. Okay, just to be machmir. Three point oh three ounces. You take the small cup. You drink four cups of wine. Lechatchila uh, has to be dry wine. Lechatchila has to be dry wine and red wine. And not mevushal. Lechatchila. Lo mevushal? There's a machloket what yain you could use for kiddush. The Rambam holds. He's the most machmir. He said you have to use wine that you could use on the mizbeach. So yain that was on the mizbeach was, was a fresh live wine. It didn't go through a pasteurization, uh, pasteurization process. Okay? After Halel, fourth cup. And then Yirtzah, Yirtzah is also part of the Seder. Chad Gadia, Chad Gadia, this is Abin Abba, Betre Yezuzay. We have a minhag to say it in one breath. We never make it, obviously. That's why we connect. Chad Gadia. Chad Gadia, after Chad Gadia, this is the best part. Whoever is Mena Mekubalim, Atzadikim, Hagdoshim, Atzorim, Achachamim, Anivonim. Shir, Ashir. At the end of the whole thing, what do you say? Shira Shirim Ashel Yislomo Yishakeni Min Chikot Piu Once you finish the Pesach, now you can do Yishakeni Min Chikot Piu And the Rashash teaches us, the name of the Ari of course At the end of the Haggadah, there is a big zivug that happens in the, in the, in the, after the Seder When does it happen? Preferably by midnight, usually every midnight of the year, what happens at midnight? We cry But this sweet, but on Pesach night Shira Shirim Asher is Yishakeni Mishikotfiyu and there's a big zivug that happens Zuna Kolelim Vak Demayim Vak Deben You guys don't know what that is Maybe one day before the Shani Ra And after Shira Shirim there's a sigula from Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri to say all the 50 psukim in the Torah that talk about Yitziat Misraim They have it in some Haggadahs Whoever is okay to do that will have done the Seder He turned the chaos into Seder He got control of the Nachash And Be'ezot the Shani Ra will be okay this month This month we will say Shri'it לזכות לביאת משיח צדקנו, לבניין בית המקדש, להשבת עם ישראל, לעצור את הגבולו, לכל הפרויקט שלנו, אמן. רבי חנן המשיח אומר, הצעק, הלוש בר יבוא לזעקות, אין לי זמן חייבים לנקוד זמן צדקו. יד יתוירה ויד יתוירה.